Today I'd like to guide you through a little exercise in data science. Um, I'm going to try and build a machine learning model and what I want is some sort of guarantee that that uh, activity is going to actually work out. So what I'm going to do is model the modeling. So uh, um, I'm going to use a, um, a calculation to estimate the probability of me having a successful outcome from machine learning. It's a, um, a bit like a famous movie that you may have seen where a uh, model is a, a representation of the real world and now we're modeling the model. So what will we learn in this? Um, we will not learn all of Pipeline Pilot. There's quite a bit there. Uh, but instead, what we're going to do is pick this particular problem and we're going to learn how to automate the calculation. Uh, it's called the Modelability Index, MODI. Then we're going to learn how to parameterize that uh, calculation. And finally, we're going to learn how to analyze that calculation. Uh, so uh, let's get going. Um, here's my Pipeline Pilot client. And uh, what I want to do is first grab my data set. So I've got a, a, a data set with log P in it. I find the component that reads that data added to a new workspace. And then I find this Modi component and I add it after that. Um, and then it does probably some good to actually read the, the built-in help text for that component. You can see there's references to some papers which I can download. Um, but especially relevant here is for very large data sets, you may wish to calculate Modi for a random subset. So let's do that. I'm going to grab a random filter component and drop it in between and say, just give me 5% of the data. Then to configure the component, I need to say, what am I modeling? I'm modeling log P. Uh, it's uh, continuous. And because Pipeline Pilot is chemistry aware, I can just say, uh, you know, the th chemistry that you need to calculate is just that. And uh, then I'm ready to go. I can add a viewer at the end of that, run the calculation. It runs quite quickly and uh, I get a number, 0.62. As it turns out, that's not a bad number. Uh, I could say, okay, I'm willing to bump this up a bit and uh, run it again. And uh, um, again, it doesn't take too long and I get a bigger number. But that's not automation, right? So I'm doing all of this pointing and clicking manually. How do we automate this process? Well, I rubber band these uh, components and I right click and I go collapse to sub protocol, give it a good name, run Modi. Uh, and then I go over to the runtime tab and I say, run that thing uh, once for each data record that I pipe in. I'm going to get uh, uh, data into that data records in by opening up a uh, input port. And then I'm going to say, just create some data, pipe it in there. And then I'm going to go uh, say, let's pipe two records in. So I run that. And I see the calculation and then the cal calculation ran again. Unfortunately, it's the same calculation, but at least I've automated it. So the second step was how to parameterize it. Um, and that's really easily done. So if I peep in here, what I want to do is change the value of this random percent filter. So what I do is I right click and I go edit component. And on this dialogue, I go, go to the promote tab and I cycle along until I see my parameter and I click promote. I get a chance to rename it, but I don't need to. And how do I feed it some values? Well, um, the simplest thing to do is uh, um, uh, create an index variable. And then on this component, I can say, um, with a little bit of pilot script, I can say, let's go in units of five times the index. And it says, OK, good. And I run it again. And now it's going to run the calculation twice, but with different values of the parameters. So this is working, right? I've uh, automated and I parameterized. What do I want to do more? The last step is to analyze. 
So uh, um, in order to do that, I uh, can do several things. Let's let's get some data flowing out of this guy. Open up a port there. Uh, I can add a viewer onto the end. Um, and uh, I don't need that viewer anymore. What I do need to do is make sure that the percentage values flow out of the component. So I can do that percent uh, very simply. And now I can just run it again. Um, in fact, let's do this. Let's just um, make a single data record and hit run. And now I can see my values. And so what I really want to do is do something like a, uh, um, a curve fit. So I can go get my curve fit component and I can say, in this case, it makes sense to fit to a rising exponential. Uh, I want to, against percent, I want to fit Modi R squared. And now it says, oh, OK, I need a property that tells me the initial coefficients. So uh, let's do that. Let's create such a property, create a new property. Uh, I'm going to call it IC for short. And it's going to be something like 0.8 for the asymptote and a minus 1 and 1 for the two coefficients. And then I give this guy the name of that property. And I go, let's just do this. And I want to make sure that I got plenty of data to work with. And the other thing I probably want to do is uh, um, I want to uh, checkpoint my calculations so that I can uh, um, I don't have to run it again when I mess around with the uh, um, curve fitting and so on and so forth. So now this is going to run. I'm going to have five data points. I'm going to fit a curve to those and uh, I'm going to look at the results. Um, you can see that the calculations with higher values of the percent do take more time. So I'm glad that I didn't try to fit everything. And I've got a good fit. The fit converged. That's my uh, asymptote there, 0.86. There's the R squared of the fit. It's a good fit. I can take a snapshot of that if I want to. Um, and all I really need to do is make a nice report. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you the report that I made. This is the uh, um, slightly improved version of the protocol. It is, all I did was I made an SY chart and added the uh, um, R squared and the uh, asymptote there. And uh, if I go to my browser, you can see. So it does, the fit is very good. Um, I, uh, um, I can see that the full data set R squared is uh, a very high number indeed. So I can reason, I can with very good confidence go on to do uh, machine learning against this data set and uh, be, expect to come up with a really good model. So uh, um, so what have we learned? Well, we've learned that, uh, you know, as data scientists, uh, we were trying to create these virtual worlds predicting log P before, without having to measure it. But now we can create a virtual world of our own virtual world and uh, um, be more or less guaranteed success when we do machine learning.